Concerns for the kidnapped American aid workers in Haiti. Former FBI agent in crisis management. Take a look at some terrifying video here from Atlanta. It shows an arrest made in connection with the deadly ambush at that American family in Mexico. Breaking news is happening on Detroit's west side where a mother and father have been shot and killed at a gas station. Every single day, it seems in the headlines, there's some sort of vehicular ambush, whether we're talking about a pedestrian at a gas station taking out a police officer, law enforcement official, or even outside the continental United States, especially in current events, whether we're talking about Europe, Africa, Mexico, South America, and more. You need to be able to stand ready to defend against these actions. Hey team, welcome to the channel. In this video, we're going to go over vehicular defensive techniques and tactics that you can put in your kit bag. That way, the next time you're moving through an urban environment, you have the skills and the knowledge and the ability to be able to deploy some basic immediate action drills in order to protect your life and those who are in your charge. We're going to break this up into a couple different chapters that you can look at down below. That way you can bounce back and forth as you see fit. First thing we need to do is get our mindset ready. And in order to do this, we're going to use a, a, a couple different things I'm going to give to you. The first one is sills. Now, I know that you know that sills are actions that are conducted at the halt, but it is a mindset, right? To stop, to look, to listen, and to smell. As you're maneuvering around, you need to be able to use your senses and trust them based off of your wisdom and your experience in order to protect yourself and defend against threats that may be posed against you. What do you see around you? What is normal? What is out of the ordinary? Same thing when it comes to our sense of smell and listening. All of these things is going to help keep you better prepared. In addition, we need to understand our basic mindset spectrum. On one end, we have white. White is being completely oblivious, and I think that you might agree with me that the vast majority of people who are on their phones 24-7 have no idea what is going on around them. Completely oblivious to any sort of threat, it makes you a soft target. You need to be able to be a hard target by using your senses, by using your knowledge, and being situational aware of what is happening around you. And so that's where we find ourselves in the spectrum of yellow. Yellow is keeping your head on a swivel, right? It is using your senses. It's looking around you. It is paying attention to what is happening in and around you and knowing and understanding what we're really doing is dealing in something that is an asymmetrical environment and it's 4D, right? Forward, back, left, right, up, down, and don't forget time, right? So keeping our head on a swivel, that's where we want to try to remain and sustain on a day-to-day -day basis, being and having situational awareness. Now, once something occurs and it draws our attention to it, now we're placed into the spectrum of orange. We're not engaging yet, and you could be in orange for a second, or you could be in orange for as long as it needs to before you either go back to yellow or you enter into red. In the mindset of red, we are actively engaging, defending or attacking a specific threat. Now, once we are in orange and red, we need to understand that our peripheral vision of what's happening around us is drastically reduced and limited. So as quick as we can, we need to get into these and then get back to yellow. And on the opposite spectrum of white, we have black. In the state of black, it is flight or fright. Right, red, is, red would be considered our fight. So in black, we're curled up in a ball or we are running away from a potential or actual threat. But know what mind state that you're in and know what mind state that other people are around you. Use your senses by stopping, looking, listening, and smelling and trusting your instincts. The only way to trust your instincts is by and through knowledge, experience, and rehearsals, right? Being able to, to work through some TTPs. Team, so far, if you're enjoying this, make sure you like, make sure you subscribe, make sure you click that notification bell, and leave some dadgum comments down below. All right, so and moving on from our mindset, we need to understand uh, some basic mission variables. Team, and I know many of you know these when I tell you that it's Mission, enemy, terrain, troops, time, and civil considerations. 
So what is the mission? That is your five W's. The who, what, when, where, and why. It tells you the overall parameters. It gives you a task and purpose. Maybe you are just driving from work to home and back. Maybe you're on an overseas uh, mission support and you're helping an orphanage. Maybe you are tasked to provide uh, security for an executive detail or for a corporate detail. Knowing your task and purpose is extremely important. And every time that you do something, you have a mission. Whether or not we are aware of it, right? If we're in that white spectrum or if we're in mindset of yellow, we all have a mission. Whether it's micro or whether it's macro. Discussing our enemy team, you need to know what the enemy threat is around you. How can we discover these things? Now we can look at news. If we're going overseas, we can use the CIA World Factbook, which gives us an, a great and tremendous amount of detail as far as the threats that may be out there, whether it's economic or political or terrorist organizations as well. We need to know what the, the, the past TTPs are. We need to know what the experience is. We need to understand what their capabilities are. From there, we need to understand what sort of terrain that we're operating in. Are you out in a woodland environment? Is it desert? Is it urban? Knowing these things, again, is going to help us define more of that the four-dimensional environment that we're dealing in and can help give us predictability as far as what should we should expect and when we should expect it. Now, there are other acronyms that, of course, we've gone through time again when it comes to understanding the terrain, using the size, shape, slope, elevation, and orientation of specific terrain features. And that applies not only out here in the woods, but in an urban environment as well. On the opposite end of, of the enemies, we have our troops, right? What is your capabilities? What is your skill set? What admin and logistics do you have? What training and experience does you and your team, however large or small, have in order to be able to accomplish your mission? Moving on, we have our time, right? And typically we're gonna use reverse planning as it relates to time. We have an end state and we start backwards planning in order to get to now, right? How much time do we have for re rehearsals? How much time do we have for planning? How much time do we have to get to where we're going? Is, is our movement and our route, is it time sensitive? Or do we have enough time to allocate some different TTPs in the event of some sort of adversity? Again, maybe it's just something as simple as traffic on your highway and your route to get into to work. Again, maybe you're having to get to an airport or leave an airport overseas. A lot of considerations when it comes to how much time that we have available. And then last in our mission variables is our civil considerations. Now this is going to apply to things like rules, articles, policies, and regulations, whether it's local, regional, state, federal, and of course dealing with all of these overseas as well. But we need to understand what they are because it's going to help dictate and shape what our response can be and what it should be given a specific scenario. And so we take all of these mission variables and we start to build an operations plan based off of them. The old acronym we used was SMEAC, right? And that's your situation, your mission, execution, admin and logistics, and then command and control. So our situation, again, man, that's, that's where we're at. It's where we're operating in. What are the in enemy information? What's the friendly information? What's the overall uh, situation, again, that we're trying to deal with and in? The mission goes back to those five W's, and in the execution paragraph, we need to understand our concept of operations, what is going to uh, classify success of the specific mission, and then any sort of, of TTPs that we have, uh, whether it's in regards to movement, contingencies, and being able to control the overall shape of the mission. Again, team, this is something that I use and go through just getting back and forth to work. It's what I use when I'm overseas on mission as well. But it needs to be intentional, right? Because your mobility is king and rehearsals are everything. Moving on uh, very briefly from our execution, we get into our admin and logistics. Here we have our beans, bullets, bandages, and bad guys, right? How are we going to care for ourselves? How are we gonna, going to be able to sustain our operations? 
what are we going to do with anything uh, that we come across off in the, out in the mission, right? Does that make sense? And then we have our command and control. These are going to be things like call signs, frequencies, uh, hierarchy of the, of the overall operation. How are we going to communicate with one another and uh, above us and adjacently? Again, you know, when we're thinking about these things, we need to understand, you know, again, what are those uh, local, again, whether we're CONUS or OCONUS, what are those local organizations that we can reach out to in the event that we need them? It could be a fire station, it could be a, a police station, it could be a school, it could be a repair shop, it could be a community park center. There's all sorts of resources that are, that are out there. Again, that's, that's more situation-based, but we need to understand the, the totality of the environment that we're operating in. And then we need to end with this mission planning. We need to understand a little bit about mission uh, risk mitigation, right? And in risk mitigation, we need to think about probability and severity, right? We start to list out all of the things that could happen, right? And then what is the impact and the likelihood of these things happening. What is the likelihood that if you're in a gas station, that somebody's going to approach your vehicle and rob you at gunpoint? Even in high crime areas, that probability is, truth be told, significantly low. But the severity of that happening can be extremely high. You search through the news and you will find time and time and time again where that has led to a deadly encounter for the victim. So we balance these things out and then we take measures in order to mitigate that risk, to reduce that risk level to something that is manageable and a risk that we feel like we can accept. And so all of this takes us into to basic route planning. We have a place of origin and we have a destination. Maybe you're moving in an urban environment from an apartment to work or to an airport. Maybe you're moving from a suburban environment into the city. Maybe you're working out through a desert environment. And you need to look at your maps. And you need to understand basic flow of traffic patterns. You need to understand times of day that traffic is impacted. Typically when people are going to work and then returning from work. The, the natural heartbeat of a city is people flooding in during the day to the urban center and then flooding back out at the end of the day. And so that dynamically impacts your ability to have freedom of maneuver. So you look at your primary route. Typically you're gonna have two routes, primary and alternate. I do, again, just going back and forth to work. I have routes that I take on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, for example. I'm not gonna tell you what I do. And I have routes that you could take Tuesdays and Thursdays. The primary route is probably the one that is uh, least restrictive of you as it relates to time. It's your primary route is probably leaving through a neighborhood, hitting a freeway, taking an exit, and moving down a main street to your place of work and then you reverse that flow to get back home but I would challenge and submit to you that you need an alternate route maybe it's leaving your home and instead of just getting straight on a freeway maybe use another art arterial road and then another arterial road and avoid the freeway altogether until you can make it to your place of work now that gives you a primary and an alternate route Along those routes, you need to know and understand what the resources are along the way, as well as what the threats are. You don't want to intentionally plan a primary or alternate route that is going to take you through a high crime area. You can get high crime areas online by looking at various websites that are going to, get, that are going to give you this information. Once I have these primary and alternate routes, I should have one getting to my destination and then returning back to my place of origin. So that's really four routes, right? Primary and alternate to get there and then primary and alternate to return back. As we are looking at our routes, we need to know and understand what those choke points are. Typically, they're going to be immediately leaving your destination or your place of origin and then the arrival to either one as well. 
So you may, uh, for example, maybe you live at the end of a cul-de-sac. As you're leaving your cul-de-sac, you can't avoid that particular leg of route. It may only be 300 meters. But if you only have one exit in order to leave your home towards your destination, that is a choke point. You can't avoid it. So that is where an adversary may place a surveillance point in order to gather reconnaissance and information based off of your travel. And then what they would do is they would continue to extend that to, to better understand your patterns. Same thing going to your destination. That last leg getting to your place of, of destination is probably a choke point. You may only have one actual route to get to your destination. Most airports are like this, right? You have one major approach. Most places of business, you may have two, but it may take way much longer of a time and not be a risk that people are willing to take to come in the back way. And so you may find yourself primarily coming in one way and one way only. This is something that we need to eradicate from our mission planning. Because those are choke points. Those are places that people can stage ambushes. They're pl places that people can stage reconnaissance. And we need to be aware. And if you continue to do so, it needs to be intentionally knowing the threat level is increased in these areas. So that you maintain in that yellow mindset. So that you have that situational awareness. In order to be able to react to these scenarios. Now what are some typical uh, TTPs that our enemy uses against us. Again, we see surveillance being used. This can be hard to encounter, again, especially if we have a white mindset. But if you see the same person in the same place every single time, that should be a cause for concern. Another TTP that we see, that's tactics, techniques, and procedures the enemies use constantly, just look at the headlines is going, going to be approaching a vehicle from a blind spot. We see this happening uh, with law enforcement officials all the time. And so anymore, we'll start to see these vehicles equipped with, with surrounding cameras so that they have no blind spots. Maybe you add some convex mirrors to your rear view mirrors in order to open up these areas because you need to be able to uh, maintain control of approach to your vehicle. We also see the use of blockades and barricades, right? We saw this in Kentucky uh, almost 10 years ago now, where a deputy was, was getting off the turnpike and there was a blockade staged. This ended up being a complex attack. And as he exited his vehicle to remove the, the items, he was gunned down in cold blood. It could be just a mob on the street. We've seen this in Haiti and other locations over the years, where just people being on the street blocking traffic has resulted in a significant deadly encounter. In the United States, we've seen this happen as well. This is a common TTP to slow you down in order to engage you to either rob you or take you of your life. Another TTP is just simply driving alongside a vehicle and shooting into it. We see this a lot overseas, but you also see it in gang violence here in the United States. How many times have you seen or heard of a news story? Vehicle turns around, comes alongside, shoots into the vehicle, and killing the driver and occupants. And then there's going to be a, a variety of complex attacks that we need to be aware of. But the more planning we do on the front end, and the more that we can stay in the yellow mindset, the better adept and able you will be in order to be able to react to these scenarios or prevent them altogether. You need to maintain your vigilance and keep your situational awareness at all times. Again, by, by maintaining that yellow mindset, keeping your head on a swivel, by using your senses and trusting your instincts. Conduct PCCs on your vehicle. Know what works, know the maintenance of it, make sure that you have equipment in your vehicle in order to be able to maintain a normal encounter, whether we're talking about a, a dead battery, a flat tire, things of this nature. Having some basic tools and equipment in your vehicle. 
maintain and control approach to your vehicle, keep your windows up and your radio down, avoid high speeds. Depending on the situation, you could consider installing a siren using your high beams at night. Again, situation is going to dictate. What's the state of your emergency brake? Not only does it work, but how is it operated? Because it is extremely difficult uh, to do some uh, 180 degree turns without it. A couple TTPs to put in your kit bag. The first one is a dog leg, right? Let's say you're on your primary route and you suspect that somebody is following you. They have made not one, not two, but three turns that are the same as yours. This seems to be un uh, uncommon and it irks you a little bit because you've been using sills along the way. And so something in your gut says that something is off. So what is, what is an immediate action drill that you can use? You can use a dog leg. A dog leg is nothing more than an intentional series of turns that no ordinary person would take. So in the event that somebody takes three turns after you, if you were able to turn into a shopping center and immediately come back out and hit that road, nobody's going to do that. Drive through a gas station and then drive immediately off without stopping to get fuel. Right? People go to gas stations in order to get gas or to run inside because it's a convenience store but nobody just drives through after taking three consecutive turns, right? Again, maybe there is that police station or firehouse that you can pull into. You can leave immediately, or you can go inside and request assistance. The dog leg is one of the tried and true methods for every convoy operation in order to be able to react defensively to a potential threat. You need to know and understand that your vehicle ultimately is the most deadly weapon that you have, regardless of what you have in you. So make sure that you understand how to uh, use your vehicle. Now from here, team, we're gonna, we're gonna drop this off, but you need to know, and I'm gonna submit to you, that you need to get out and you need to rehearse. How, do you, how are you driving? How can you react in a vehicle to a threat or scenario? Whether deadly force has been applied or whether it has not been applied, if you don't run through scenarios, if you don't whiteboard it out, and then get out and put boots to ground, ass to seat, and start exiting your vehicle, running through some different drills, understanding and having situational awareness of different locations and changing conditions, you're setting yourself up for failure. Team, I hope you enjoyed the content of this one. I know it was more mission planning as it relates to convoy operations and defensive vehicle ops. But if you did, again, make sure you like it. If you feel it was a positive content, leave some comments down below. Consider sharing it out with a friend or battle buddy as well. That way we can continue to keep this conversation going and continue to grow this awesome community. Team, I appreciate every single one of y'all. Thanks for your time. Until then, you stay out there, you keep grinding, and you stay stoked. Portland, Oregon descended into violence on Sunday. Protest turned destructive in downtown Seattle tonight. Here's what we know as of 10 o'clock. Protests started at about noon today in Seattle, but turned destructive right around 4 p.m.